We have been so blessed through our first nine shows to have wonderful guests, and that blessing continues tonight with Dan Johnson, the founder of New Day Treatment Center. Dan, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Curtis. It's great to be with you. For those that don't know New Day, tell us a little bit about your organization. Well, New Day is a, an addiction treatment center, and uh, we're unique because we are both a Christian organization, and so everything that we do comes from um, a Christian faith perspective, but we also offer inpatient, outpatient services uh, for addiction treatment that are um, accredited, we're licensed, able to receive insurance, and, and all that sort of thing. That's a tricky line to walk sometimes, yeah, being both Christian and accredited and able to be covered by insurance. How have you guys navigated those waters? Well, it's not been easy, uh, and we have not shied away from the fact that we are Christian, mm. and yet we do rely upon evidence-based methods and so forth. And so kind of the way I've always described it to our, our team and to others is that uh, we have a biblical worldview, and uh, kind of we filter everything through that. And what makes it through that makes it into our program. Hmm. And um, with rare exception, most of the uh, traditional uh, recovery and treatment um, methodologies and, and so forth uh, a fit. Uh, addiction treatment is still one of the areas of mental health where there's a lot of faith still included, uh, kind of rooting back into the old 12 steps and, yeah. and even prior to that historically. Dan, why did you, you're the founder and the president, why yeah. did you start this? Why did, did you see a need? Did it mean something to you personally? Why did you create New Day? Well, it all started when um, I was actually, my background is, is as a pastor. Mm. And so I was a pastor of a church, and this was back in the 1990s. And uh, a friend of mine who attended our church came to me and said, uh, my son's struggling with heroin. And, and I'll never forget the next question. He said, what are we going to do about it? <laughs> and, uh, and he wasn't trying to push anything on me, but just because of our connection, um, he invited me really into their struggle. And, uh, and that was really my introduction into the enormity of this need, uh, the power of God to help people, as well as the families that are struggling with their kids or, or spouses and so forth. So he used the word we instead of I. He exactly. didn't say, what am I going to do about it? Help me pray about it. He said, what are we going to do about it? Did you have any idea in that moment what you would do about it? None. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than, obviously, I had a heart for people. Mm. And having been a pastor, I had a you know, heart to help people uh, take truth and apply it into the everyday realities of, of life. And, and uh, there really wasn't, you know, there wasn't Google to go find stuff right. back in, in those days. And so what I did was I just started meeting regularly with his son and, uh, and also with him and, and just kind of learned by the seat of my pants, really. Hmm. And, uh, and over time, as you know, my phone started to ring. And uh, at the other end would be somebody who said, so-and-so told me that you helped them with their son. And then they you know, told me their story. Wow. And that was really the genesis of it all. And here we are, what, almost 30 years later, 25, right. 30 years? Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Dan, tell me about the link between mental health and addiction. We, we talk here at Restoring Hope with Crosswinds mm -hmm. Counseling about mental health most of the time, but I think those two are so intertwined, and I'm sure you see Absolutely. that on a regular basis. Absolutely. From your perspective, how do they fit together? Mm -hmm. Well, addiction is usually a chemical addiction is what we, we deal with, drugs and alcohol. But it is, I sometimes refer to it as a secondary issue. Mm. In other words, it is almost always something that people do in response to something else. And so whether it's in response to depression or anxiety or just being overwhelmed in life or trauma that happened in their childhood, um, addiction is, is very, very commonly uh, connected to other life issues, challenges. And in order to really overcome addiction, we have to get below the surface and find out what those issues are, and then work to kind of untangle them and to bring hope and healing into those areas as well. So you, they are all intertwined yeah. very, very closely together. I feel like in the Christian community, sometimes we do a pretty bad job of handling the stigma of mental health and sweeping things under the rug and not talking about things that we really should be talking about more openly, is that the same situation in chemical addiction too? 
It is. I think it's starting to change a little bit. Good. As I think it's starting to change a little bit, just generally speaking, mm -hmm. with mental health, um, and where it's it's hard to ignore the headlines. Um, you know, eighty, ninety thousand people, you know, died last year because of an overdose. Uh, those are numbers that are hard to ignore. Right. And statistically, uh, the 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 numbers are the same for people who attend church and don't attend church. Hmm. And so um, the same number of people struggle with these issues, whether they go to church on Sunday or not. And so increasingly people are uh, sensing that uh, I don't have to hide this. Um, I need to uh, be open enough, transparent enough to seek help because there is help available. And, and really what the church needs to do is communicate there is help available. Yeah. With that in mind, Dan, what do you think the future of New Day looks like? As you guys move into 22, as you move into the future, what do you think is down the road for your organization? Well, we increasingly, um, I mean, my background and kind of the, the beginning was in the church. And so even though we, we serve a wide variety of, of clients and, and have referrals from all over the state of Indiana right now, um, we increasingly seek to partner with churches to help with that stigma uh, to help pastors understand how they can come alongside someone in their church uh, that says, hey, pastor, I'm having this issue in my family. What can you do to help me? Uh, where they also use the we <laughs> word right, right. And, and invite their pastor into their struggle uh, to where uh, he or she knows how to help them. Mm. Dan, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing here in Indianapolis, and, and thank you for being with us tonight on Restoring Hope. We really appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks Dan a lot. Johnson, the founder and president of New Day Treatment Center. We'll be right back.